with this jerk back in the garage. Unbelievable. Never could believe it. I could. I tried several <laughs> couldn't times. Do it. Couldn't do it. So, oh, Schmitty boy brought his uh, Everlast pig to do some aluminum because my welder will not do aluminum. So this is a knockoff of a Wheelwood pedal. I've done did cut it down. We're going to shorten that puppy so we can do a floor mount because I don't have room on my buggy to do top mount brake setup. So we're going to see if this will weld. Are you uh, thinking it will? No. Oh, okay. Way to be enthusiastic. I just cleaned the garage for him so he'd have plenty of workspace. <laughs> uh, it's really nice. We swept into a pile, into a pile right next to where we're working. <laughs> Several piles too. We got a pile there. We got that pile. Piles in the old garage. Piles, 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 baby. Guys, I want to take a real quick second to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is the Big Daddies Down Texas GoPowerSports.com. Now we've showed a ton of GoPower Sports parts. We've used almost everything they have to offer on our channel, but this part we're about to talk about is by far hands down the best part they've ever brought to market and that is the juggernaut cvt pulley now this pulley is designed to replace your stock 30 series cvt front pulley it'll work with your belt your back plate everything it goes on any 212 or smaller engine or even their new 225 uh, tillotson engine this pulley is hands down the best part you can put on your bike if you do not have a governor if you have the governor removed your normal 30 series cvt pulley is going to hold you at around 4000 to 4500 rpm and that's been a huge problem for us because the bike will get to 40 mile per hour let's say super fast then it's dead after that this pulley helped us gain almost 18 mile per hour on the street legal mini bike you're going to see us use this pulley a lot over the next few weeks on mini bikes we're bringing back mini bike monday so stay tuned but this pulley guys i'm telling you if you have a 212 that's built with uh, or even just stock pretty much with no governor you're going to want this pulley it is insane how hard it pulls up hills everywhere and the front pulley is going to make a lot less heat because it has roller weights in it instead of those casted slide weights which cause a lot of friction and give a ton of heat which is going to make your belts last even longer running this pulley so make sure to check out the links in the video description where you can find this pulley i'm telling you guys it is awesome so uh make sure to get one they got a they're fully stocked with them they sold out the first day they brought these to market and i think you can read reviews where everybody says these pulleys are the ultimate mini bike part or small go-kart part so check them out and make sure to click that redbeard sent you when you check out back to the video does it look like it's going to do it yep professional grade tool from swag off road sure is when are you getting yours <laughs> you got a box over there from did you yeah where that's none of your business chris this is not your shop <laughs> well i'm taking this back i didn't get that what'd you get they sent me the tubing roller kit something you don't even need yeah i want to roll tube <laughs> baby i'll show you what i'm gonna roll we can carry tube in here all the time i'd rather roll it here. <laughs> i thought they said they were gonna give you all this stuff they are, they want to check, they just ain't going to ship me everything. Did you talk to Troy? Yeah, I just talked to Tell Troy. Chris sent you. I told him some people sent me. <laughs> I gotta get my kickback. I take it, whatever, I'll take it. I never asked for it anyways.
Well, we got the, um, this is a bracket for a 350Z uh, air conditioner belt tensioner. So I've cut the tensioner down quite a bit. And then I made up a cardboard template for this thing. And basically, let me get my ground off. Basically that, this tensioner bracket will weld to this bracket to make it a solid piece. And then I can unbolt this whole setup off with a 10 mil right here and an eight millimeter right here and pull this whole bracket off. Then this is a, a bolt also sharing the front mount for the supercharger. Oops, sorry. And then there's a couple, there's all kinds of bolts. We want it to be strong because, you know, there's not a ton of force on it, but there is. And we want to be able to tension it so we get a lot of wrap around this and get a good amount of wrap around all of our belts. So now I can pull this off, fully weld it, weld this to it. And then everything's done other than Chris is going to come back. I made these aluminum plates when he was figuring out the main bottom bracket. So I just got to drill out a one and a half inch hole because we'll have a one and a half inch inlet and outlet one on each side this is the outlet so we're going to the heads and that's going to be a little pain i'm sure working all that junk in it'll be kind of cool looking but not it will, so it won't dumb looking. be cool looking <laughs> i hate everything so last time you you fellers have seen the video the first part of the video chris had this huge idea he kept arguing with me let's mount the supercharger sideways and i'm like well chris no that don't he said greg trust me the fans will love it so I did it for the fans. Guess what? Fans didn't love it. Oh, you know what? What? I don't care. Well, and he's a social media influencer too. <laughs> this coming from a social media influencer. We cut up the mount and we mount the super. It was actually this guy's idea. You see it on screen. That's whose idea it was. He was like, "Why didn't y'all mount it like this?" And I'm like, "Dang it." You know, it's just one of those things we overlooked. We should have mounted it that way. Turns out, thank you for that guy that's on screen. I don't know who he was. Can't remember. But uh, the factory intake manifold is going to work. And we're using my original uh, flanges as spacers for it. So it's going to work out perfect. We, Chris basically just has to make a little adapter that will bolt to that. And then go up and go right to the supercharger. It's going to be pretty dope nasty. Yep. So now I'm making a new mount for the rear of the supercharger to brace it on the back. The the um, pulley, we're going to have to come up with a different set, but, you know, whatever. Who cares? I don't care no more. I don't even care. Never did. It fits way too good. It does? It fits too good. What do you want me to do? It fits too good. <laughs> wow, I really like those crooked cuts you made me do, Chris. <laughs> That looks beautiful. Unbelievable. Looks Don't. Like cut a lot faster too. No, it took way more time. Straight angles take way more time than valleys.
Well, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. This thing turned out sick, and uh, thank you for the people that told me to flip it that way. Just one of those moments where, you know, when you fabricate stuff, we've done this before, we'll mount something, just overlook a better way. And uh, we love you guys giving your input because, uh, you know, we would have mounted, it would have been a lot harder, and our intake would have been unequal length. So now we can basically use a stock intake manifold and just port it out, uh, like port match it to the heads, and also pour it out where it hooks up to the blower so the next episode you're going to see me make that connector that basically hooks the supercharger to the intake uh you're also going to see me do the tensioner i got to build a whole new tensioner set up and that sucks so this was like you know hours worth of work that we had to redo but you know dude had a better idea and uh he was saying that our pulley was in our way for our charge pipe or intake and that wasn't the case it was just better to mount it that way you know with a draw through you want everything downhill if you can to help from uh, fuel pulling let me know what you think guys we're doing all an fittings on this we got our oil cooler mounted that's what we mounted up on the row cage so yeah we just got to do a tensioner and that intake and then we can start this thing and start tweaking our carb uh, we do have to add our wideband bung and we're going to add a pipe that connects these headers together so it's going to be a one-piece header setup make sure to check out those links in the video description for everything of course on this buggy at the very top of the list is that juggernaut pulley i'm telling you guys it's no joke it's so great having this pulley on our mini box now and we're actually going to be building a couple yard carts like little red so we can do some dirt track racing at the new property. And you better believe these juggernauts are going to be on everything we build from now on. Uh, because, you know, we don't keep governors. So let me know what you think about the buggy. We are back on it. We stopped for a really good while because we had Randy's go-kart to build. We had a ton of stuff. We got a lot of stuff done in the meantime. We had a problem with our springs. Uh, but uh, Dave's off-road finally got that worked out for us. So huge shout out to him. And... Uh, just stay tuned, guys. we got a lot of videos coming out. The next video you see on this will actually be the fuel cell getting made, and then uh, we'll get back to these. Uh, we're hoping this will be run in, in like three three more videos or so. We're back on it, boys. We're back on it, and we're still trying to build the new shop. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Chris Schmidt, for coming down and helping me out on this. Uh, it's really nice having people in the garage when you're doing little tedious brackets like this. And uh, Chris is a huge help. He's a great fabricator, and he's a great friend. So thank you, Chris. Check him out, Chris Schmidt, on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, we love you guys, and God bless.